teaching Buddhist life principles, in trusting in the vow of the Buddha, calling out the Buddha's name, I will pass through the journey of life with strength and joy, revering the light of the Buddha, reflecting upon my imperfect self, I will strive to live a life of gratitude, following the teachings of the Buddha, discerning the right path. I will share the true Dharma with all, rejoicing in the compassion of the Buddha, respecting and aiding all sentient beings. I will work towards the welfare of society and the world. Namo Amitabha. Namo Amitabha. Namo Amitabha. Namo. Namo. Chant Mandana Tisara.
I rely on the Sangha. May I, along with all sentient beings, become one Sangha of life, able to move forward and live with a dynamic spirit that is hindered by nothing. The unsurpassed, deep and wondrous Dharma, even in millions of Kelpas, is extremely difficult to encounter, but now I am able to experience and embrace it. May I come to understand and revere the true meaning of the Tathagata. <clears throat> the next is the loving-kindness meta-meditation. May all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May I be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to me. May I live in peace and harmony. May my family be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my teachers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my friends be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May strangers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my enemies be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May all beings be happy and well. May no harm come to them. May no difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. Today, the members of the Calgary Buddhist Temple have reverently come before Amida Buddha to observe the Shotsky Memorial Service for the month of July. With deepest reverence and thankfulness for the all-embracing wisdom and compassion of Amida Buddha, we repeat the sacred name. Namo Amida Buddha. Namo Amida Buddha. Namo Amida Buddha. As we are gathered together today, let gratitude fill our hearts and minds as we remember our loved ones who have passed away. The names for the Shotsuki Hoyo for the month of July are Miyoko Nakaeda, Jack Noboru. Nishiyama. And now our main chant, which will be Shoshinye. <coughs> Thank you. 
Yeah. 
How's everyone doing this morning? It's going to be quiet while I try to rearrange, but I think there's too much for me to rearrange, and uh, <laughs> so <laughs> just bear with me one second, please. joining us if, uh, for our live streaming this morning. It's wonderful to have you here with us and we have a, such a beautiful day out today. So I hope everyone can enjoy it. 
like to start with a few words of reflection. And these words are from Master Nagarjuna's, uh, from his um, uh, 12 verses of reverence, which is called Junirai. All things are impermanent and without self, like the moon on water, lightning, shadow, or dew. Multitudes benefit from the Dharma that is beyond words. Thus I bow to the ground before Amida, the Noble One. Today we are remembering those whose date of death falls in the month of July. And by taking the time to remember loved ones who have passed, it allows us to be mindful of the truth of our existence. We are all subject to change and will one day have to leave this world. And like Master Nagarjuna's verse states, all things are impermanent and interdependent, like the moon reflecting in water, like lightning, like shadows. They all do not exist on their own. The verse also states that multitudes benefit from the Dharma. We benefit from the Dharma because it brings awareness and knowledge and understanding to our life. Right view means to have knowledge and understand the truth of impermanence and interdependence. And by having this right view, we will ease the suffering that we experience and also the suffering that others might experience because of our actions. When we have right view, what we think and say and do will all be in accord with the Dharma. However, living fully in accord with the Dharma is difficult for us because of our self-centeredness. We create conflict and difficulties in relationships when things do not go our way. There are times when we might get angry or frustrated or jealous of a situation and act out from those thoughts by using our speech or our body. When this happens, we are not living in accord with the Dharma and are attending to the selfish needs of the ego, which results in difficulty. There is a verse in the Dhammapada, verse number six, that says, People forget that their lives will end soon. For those who remember, quarrels come to an end. It's interesting that we have monthly memorial services for those that are no longer with us. And yet it is difficult for us to understand that our lives may end soon. Now trying to imagine that our life will end soon is difficult. We live thinking that there will always be a tomorrow. And because of this, we may find ourselves quarreling over things that really have no meaning. You might think that this changes for us as we reach the twilight of our years, but unless we have understanding of impermanence and interdependence, the ego will still engage in quarrels. Now I witnessed a relationship that spanned a number of years where the couple frequently quarreled with each other. Their relationship had many ups and downs, but their quarreling all came to an end when illness and the certainty of death was diagnosed. There was an immediate change from their self-centeredness to the awareness that life is short and what really matters is life itself. The change in their relationship was noticeable right away. The quarreling stopped and the comfort and well-being of each person in their relationship became the focus of importance. They exercised patience with one another because they understood that this unrepeatable life was soon coming to an end. The couple were not devout followers of any religion but the Dharma did touch them in a way that made them aware of the impermanence of life. And by witnessing their sudden change to this truth, provided another teaching for me to awaken to the fact that all things are impermanent and without self, just like the moon on water, lightning, shadow, or dew. 
Yet years later, I still find myself thinking that I will always have tomorrow. And because of this, I am aware that my self-centeredness is very real and how the deep understanding of the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path, as taught by Shakyamuni Buddha, can guide me to be less self-centered. When the passing of life took its natural course, the relationship was remembered by the surviving person with fond memories that wrought and held them together. Sorrow of being separated filled the heart, and the realization that this life is fleeting was now a truth experienced in the present moment and by reflecting on the past. Their quarrels that once held in personal importance were now looked upon as a stubbornness of character that was viewed from another perspective. We all benefit from the Dharma when we take the time to listen and to hear the teaching. The benefit is the result of a life lived less self-centered because of the knowledge of impermanence and interdependence that right view awakens within us. The message today is to remind us that it is never too late to hear the Dharma and to awaken to the compassion of Amida's vow. When we become aware of our self-centeredness and our limitations, that is when we realize the significance of taking refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Song. I would like to end by hearing the words of reflection one more time and with a reading from the letters of Renu. People forget that their lives will end soon. For those who remember, quarrels come to an end. All things are impermanent and without self, like the moon on water, lightning, shadow, or dew. Multitudes benefit from the Dharma that is beyond words. Thus I bow to the ground before Amida, the Noble One. So this letter written by Renyo is called The Great Sage, The World Honored One. And he wrote these letters as a way to spread the Dharma for those who were not able to read and for those who were not able to attend services. These letters would go out to different households or dojos at his time so they'd be able to hear the Dharma. Once again, this is the great sage, the world-honored one, written by Renu. When we carefully consider the transiency of human life, we realize that the living will certainly end in death and the prosperous will eventually decline. This is how life is in the human world. Even so, we vainly live days and nights, spending months and years to no purpose. Indeed, we may lament about it, but I feel that we could never really comprehend the true extent of this pitiful, sad situation. How true it is that impermanence is difficult to escape for all, from the great sage, the world-honored one, at the highest level, to Devadatta, who committed evil acts and grave offenses at the lowest. Moreover, to receive life as a human being is indeed rare and difficult, and even more so is it the opportunity to encounter the Buddha Dharma. However, even if we met the Buddha Dharma, the way of emancipation from birth and death through practices of self-power is difficult to follow at the present time in the latter days. Therefore, our lives would be spent in vain unless we encountered the primal vow of Amida Tathagata. Fortunately, however, we have now been able to meet this unique teaching of the universal vow. So the only thing we should aspire to is the pure land of bliss. The only one we should tr tr really, 
The only one we should rely on is Amida Tathagata. For this reason, we should settle our trusting heart and say the Nembutsu. On the other hand, what people in the world generally conceive in their minds is that if only they recite Namo Amida Butsu aloud, they will be born in the land of bliss. But this idea is completely groundless. What then is the meaning of the six character name, Namo Amida Butsu? We should understand that when we entrust ourselves unwavering to Amida Tathagata, the Buddha fully recognizes this and saves us. This is manifested as the six character name, Namo Amida Butsu. How then should we entrust ourselves to Amida Tathagata in order to resolve the matter of the greatest importance of the afterlife? We should rely single-mindedly and unwaveringly on Amida Tathagata. Entrusting ourselves to Amida without any qualms and discarding the inclination to perform various practices and miscellaneous acts of virtue. Amida recognizes this, sends forth rays of light and embraces with them the sentient beings who rely on the Buddha. This is expressed as receiving the benefit of Amida Tathagata's embracing light. It is also referred to as receiving the benefit of the vow that never forsakes us. Once we have thus been received within Amida Tathagata's light, we will be born in the true fulfilled land immediately after our life comes to an end. There should be not any doubt about this. Beyond this, what is the use of relying on other Buddhas or practicing other metoria, metor, meritorious good acts? How deeply happy and grateful I feel for the benevolence of Amida Tadarita. How could we express our gratitude for Amida's benevolence, which is like the vast sky and lofty mountains? We should bear in mind that we simply say aloud, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu to express our deep gratitude for Amida's benevolence, humbly and respectfully. Just a moment of silence. Taking in the words of Renyo, we had words of the Garjana, and then from the Dhammapada, the Buddha himself. All expressing us to hear and listen to the words and the teachings of impermanence and interdependence. To awaken to the fact that our life is fleeting, although it doesn't seem like it, we always think we have tomorrow. Writing this uh, message today, this was the couple were were family members, and it did bring back memories of how fleeting life was, and their rocky relationship at times, and how it all came to an end of quarreling when they knew that life was coming to an end and their, their relationship was, was, was going to cease. That is what living with the knowledge, the understanding of impermanence and interdependence really means. Uh, I did mention they were not devout, but for me looking from the outside in, it was the teaching of the Dharma. Uh, and they realized it on their own, whether they understood it was the Dharma or not. But if we find ourselves quarreling or having thoughts that are all self-centered and bringing in difficulties within our own life and those around us, Maybe it's a time just to take a moment and think about those who are no longer with us. 
look back on our lives, how quickly have we gotten to this age? And how much have we changed in that time? I'll leave it right there, and I'd like to thank you all very much for joining me today for this Sunday service. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon. And we'll put our hands together in Gosho one more time as a reciting gratitude to Buddha's name. Namo Amidus, Namo Amidus, Namo Amidus, Namo Namo Namo. Have yourselves a wonderful week. Thank you very much for those of you who came and for those of you who uh, stayed with us for the uh, virtual service. Thank you very much. <laughs>